I think it's fair to say that Eddie Hearn has actually learned on the job. Allow me to explain. Let's talk. Push the weight in your flex. Flex the lab is one in the six. If it's a runner boy, you need no question. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker never learned your lesson. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boof. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boof. I mean, they woke up, drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker. Change like a hoe, brother. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Love that jazz music. It's so relaxing. Well, let's talk about Mr. Eddie Hearn now. You guys know, I'm not a fan of this man at all. Um, he is consistent with a lot of what's going on wrong in boxing as far as uh, these guys double talking and lying to the audience and... Uh, Having their product avoid uh, the uh, competition that we'd like to see um, in the name of protecting his investments. You know, this this is not new behavior. Um, he's just the latest addition of schmuckery in um, the business of boxing. But at the same time, you actually have to call it how you see it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Uh, my thing with Eddie Hearn was when he first came on the scene, probably I, I took notice of him probably maybe a decade ago, like maybe 2014, maybe, maybe 2014, 2015, about a decade ago. And the first video I saw of this man, he had some shades on and he was doing shtick. You know, he was like in character. And I'm like, who is this guy? You know, with this James Bond accent. I say, oh, he's a British dude. Okay. You know, actually, I don't call him James Bond. I call him James Khan. Because he appeared to be a con artist, which, which is what he did, you know, with that Anthony Joshua situation. Um, he had wolf tickets. And to this, to this day, we still haven't seen AJ versus Deontay Wilder. You know, I'm pretty much over that. Because um, the, uh, the verdict is out. Your man's scared of him and you're protecting your investment to the very end. All right. But this, that's not what this video is about. Um, I'm going to call it how I see it. In the last nine or ten years, he's learned on the job. He's made some mistakes, but the thing is, you have to learn how to fail forward. And that's what businessmen do, and Eddie's a businessman. I'll give him that much. And um, what we've seen in the last decade or so, um, HBO has gone away. And um, something else happened that we didn't think would happen. That was... Uh, that was HB, not HBO, that was Showtime, Vanishing. Now, here's why I'm talking about this. Um, the Zone Boxing, when it first was uh, introduced to the American market, um, I said, it's not going to work. Because Eddie had got a big bag from um, this Russian gazillionaire, you know, as his haters, as the, the PBC haters said, and he has endless money and he was going to, and there was emphasis on him buying up the PBC fighters. And I don't know why the fans were happy about that. And the PBC had deals with Showtime. And uh, I said, I don't know why y'all focus on PBC fighters. You're not focused on, uh, you know, uh, Don King's fighters. You're not focused on, focused on um, top rank fighters. Why the focus on PBC fighters? Oh, okay. I get it. Cause it's owned by a black man, but whatever. You know, um, and that failed miserably. It failed miserably. And um, what's the point in having deep pockets when your product is not good? And I said, the zone boxing is not what American boxing fans are looking for. This is not, you know, listen, if you don't know, American boxing fans, they don't love boxing like that. They're more in love with fighters. That's safe to say. Uh, uh, Boxing fans are different worldwide. Over here, you have more uh, fans that are uh, uh, they're fans of fighters rather than the overall sport. Um, so Eddie Hearn didn't understand that when he first got here. He didn't understand the American market. Um, but one man's meat is the other man's poison. And being that the fans in America are so fickle and uh, they're so ridiculous. I think he's learned 
that about the American fans now. He understands how to handle them. And when things were imploding, HBO going away, and Showtime going away, and um, things going on within the PBC, um, he's there to pick up the pieces and he's doing what he can. Um, and I listen, here's the deal with, with, with this overall thing of boxing. I remember getting into these debates years ago and when people were saying yeah how do you feel about uh eddie hearn about to buy up the pbc like they you know there was a lot of racial uh undertones or overtones rather with, with those statements i said look man i'm not gonna engage in that kind of conversation with you because i know where it comes from with you um but with me i'm on record saying i don't care who runs boxing as long as I get the fights that I want, I don't care about that. I repeat, I don't care who runs boxing, which means Eddie Hearn could have came over here and did what he planned to do, buy up all the fighters. I don't care if they, I don't care what banner all these guys are under. As long as they're fighting each other and proving who's the best, that's all I care about. I don't care about their money. I'm not on anyone's payroll. I don't care. And once I said that, people sort of like stopped talking to me. I'm not going to engage. Look, Al Heyman did a lot of good things, but he also dropped the ball with some things. He's not perfect like everyone else in the, in the sport of boxing. They're not perfect. So if Eddie Hearn with zone came over here and literally dropped the bag and had all of the major fighters on his umbrella and we got the fights that we wanted, like a UFC kind of thing, I'd be satisfied. That's for them to worry about their money and things of that nature. That's for them. But I am the consumer. I want to pay for a product. So he tried it with his own boxing and it, it, it fell on his face, but he's still around. Now, when Showtime went belly up, and now you got the PBC with a deal with uh, Amazon Prime, Eddie Hearn is moving and shaking not even in the shadows, but he's picking up some pieces. Because there's a lot of fighters that are not happy with the current situation. And one of them is Boots Ennis. This is very important. He's an IBF welterweight champion because of the situation with Terrence Crawford. It says here in this article, IBF welterweight Jerron Boots Ennis is looking for a new promoter. Recently, I've been reported that he had been in discussions with a number of promoters, including Matchroom Boxing. Ennis, 26, was upgraded to the status of champion as a consequence of Terrence Crawford's contractual obligation to negotiate a rematch with Errol Spence, which is recently, from what I've heard, that fight's off now. No, no, you know, things are always subject to change. It's boxing. Last time Boots won was in Atlantic City when he beat Romain Villa. Uh, he said, Eddie Hearn says, we've had some uh, very brief chats at the end of the day. Uh, we'd love to make uh, Boots a part of the matchroom team, part of the matchroom team. He is one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. We will see where it goes. Now, uh, Hearn is also, he's looking to enhance his American stable by complimenting Jesse Rodriguez and Devin Haney and Edgar Belanga, Alicia Baumgartner and more. So Eddie... I think he understands the market now. He understands the American market has a short attention span. Now I'm being cut and dry and fair. And when you do something good, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say you're doing something good. If he picks up boots, that's a good thing. Because Eddie will put boots in his hometown for several fights. And I don't know if he'll be successful getting him in the ring with uh, uh, Bud, but he's going to try like hell to make that happen. He's trying like hell to do what's right by uh, Conor Ben. Although I don't deal with Conor Ben, the guy's juice to the gills. But you see what he's doing for him. He can't fight in his own country, fine. We're going to get him fight somewhere in America. And he's done that. And he, Alicia Bumgarner is working with him. He's worked with Devin Haney. He got Edgar Belanga there. He got, he got Jesse Rodriguez. One man's meat is the other man's poison. So I, I've been paying attention. And y'all know 
I am not an Eddie Hearn fan, but let me explain something to y'all. This is boxing. You'll be cool with one with one person's moves one minute, and then the next minute, they do something that you cannot stand in the pocket for. And it works vice versa with me. When you do something good, I'm going to talk about it. When you do something bad, I'm going to talk about it. And if he picks up Jerron Boots Ennis, I think it's a good thing. Because I think Eddie Hearn has learned when you get a hold of a guy in America, it's fairly easy to promote him. You put Boots up in Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? Then you could throw him over there in Atlantic City, one state over. If he gets real big, you could bring him up to New York. Philadelphia, New York, we're like cousins. So I think Eddie has learned on the job. So I'm going to give him credit for this. Hell is frozen over. Drew Titan is giving Eddie Hearn credit. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So I wouldn't be nervous if uh, Boots ended up in match room because I think Eddie will do right by him. I think Eddie will do right by him. I think Eddie has, I think he has a better understanding of the American market. He understands that the American boxing fans have short attention spans and they're more in love with fighters than the actual game of boxing. Which is why the Zone app, the, the Zone boxing app, wouldn't do well over here in America. Because I think Eddie Hearn understands that Americans don't love boxing like that. They love the boxers. How can we prove that? Easy. We're Showtime Boxing now. Didn't see that coming. What happened to HBO Boxing? Didn't see that coming. I can't wait to see what happens with uh, Amazon Prime in the next two to five years. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Bronx on deck. Move!